<laughs> Today, coffee drinkers are celebrating National Coffee Day and taking selfies. I was trying to take a selfie with Matt. I'll have to do it here in a, in a little bit. But according to the National Coffee Association, Java goes way back, like to the 15th century in the Yemen district. He brought in the history expert himself. Look at him thinking so. Our very own Matt Metcalf to explain all things history to us. Hey, Matt. Yeah, it's a lot of history. I was just noticing in that financial segment, too. Heather must be loving it every moment of the day. <laughs> Good times. So did either of you have a cup of coffee this morning? Maybe more than one. I did more not. More than one, yeah. A lot of people, <laughs> arguably the most popular drink in America. A lot of people might not know that, as you mentioned, the Yemen district. So coffee came from Africa. And as trade grew in the 14 and 1500s, it made its way to Europe. But not everyone thought that the bitter brew was a good thing. Clergy in Venice actually condemned it. And some even called it, I want to get this quote correct, the bitter invention of Satan. Ooh. Yeah, they, yeah, like they took it seriously. Yeah, eventually coffee did make its way to North America, New York, Philadelphia, and where did they drink? Just like today, going to coffee houses. Yeah, they weren't new. <laughs> going back 250 years, coffee houses where people would get together and talk politics. And coffee started uh, vying for popularity, the most popular drink in America, after which historic event? Well, the Boston Tea Party, of course, um, because back then not drinking tea was a political statement. So kind of cool, a little, little bit of uh, coffee history for you. But I have something even cooler from you. I learned like you. 17 oh. things in that last three seconds. <laughs> I, I got no time. I got, I I got know, I know. with history, man. All right, so what did I pull from the vault, you're saying? Okay, so for decades, some Douglas County residents shared their first Java jolt in the morning with one another at a local pharmacy. The Arcola Pharmacy was home to a very select group of coffee drinkers. Each had their own personalized cups, a symbol of an enduring small town tradition, one that Bill Yock profiled back in 1995, and I've pulled it for you today from the vault. Larry Bushu has spent the last decade carrying on a 47-year tradition. Don't want the coffee too strong or we'll hear about it. As the owner of the Arcola Pharmacy, home to the Arcola Coffee Cup Club. Yeah, I got my cup in uh, about 1956 after I got out of high school and uh, started working here during college. There are 161 other cups, like Larry's, each with a name and its own special place. The cupboard was originally built by the high school industrial arts class and expanded to run the full length of the soda fountain, forever locking in the size of the club. It just ended up that number, so that number stayed. Uh, someone has to die or move away before we can put someone else up. Come on, Bob. Your club. <laughs> Bob Arl, the founder and unofficial club president for life, still shows up at 8 each morning, drinking from a cup he first labeled and set on a shelf in 1948. <laughs> 20 or so regulars also show up every morning for their caffeine constitutional. Good, good coffee. <laughs> the camaraderie of the club, the real draw, monikers on the cups hinting at their own stories of nicknames and past exploits. It's mostly uh, ball games, bowling. When the weather improves, we have to watch the golf balls sail over. The rural version of a breakfast power meeting. Old friends replaying the highs and lows of yesterday's news. Oh, it was bad, yeah. We got a hold of a bunch of guys that rolled off a well. Retelling the jokes and stories they've shared over their lives, one cup of coffee at a time. Miller's son played for the Cardinals. And so he thinks he knows something about football. I don't know anything about it. <laughs> the second cup price is only good if you stay on the stool. If you get off the stool, then you go back to the first. Well, he decided to go ahead and go to school, so he went and contacted George House. Two cups for a nickel. <laughs> it's bad enough having to listen to it without having to participate in it. But. Over the years, traditions have been added to traditions. A drawing each Wednesday morning determines a Thursday morning benefactor. The lucky name, buying coffee for anyone who comes in. Anybody that comes in, yeah. 
And there's often a joke like, well, here comes that bus pulling up over there, you know, that type of thing. But uh, it'll usually run 15 to 20 people. I don't know who that guy was that pulled your number out of there. No, we have a number of people that don't know they bought until somebody thanks them on the street the next day or two. 675, got off easy this morning, Terry. By 8.30, the men of the Coffee Cup Club have left. Good morning. And the women of the club take up their positions. And if any women happen to come in a little early... Then we're told by the men, we're too early. It's not that chivalry is dead in Arcola, just aging a bit. It used to be that the women came just strictly on their coffee breaks from work, but now it's a daily... After the last pot has been brewed, the cups are washed and carefully put back in their places. A few cup owners will wander in during the rest of the day, but it's the morning crowd that makes up the heart of the club. After 47 years, there is still a waiting list for a place on the wall. People seem to appreciate it when we put a cup up there for them. And the slow changing of names that marks the aging of the town itself keeps alive the spirit and tradition of sharing more than just a good cup of coffee. As long as we can keep the door open, I think the coffee club will be here. You gotta love that, right? So Bill, back then, Bill also reported that there was one requirement for membership in the club. You had to drink a certain amount of coffee, five gallons, which was the equivalent of 100 cups, hopefully not all in one sitting, um, <laughs> before you could actually be put on the waiting list to be part of that club. And I have to give a shout out to Mark at the uh, Arcola Chamber who called me back. I called to find out what happened to the mug club. Well, it's actually being stored at the Arcola, uh, I'm sorry, it is at the Arcola Depot, and more people are actually continuing this tradition, though, at the Broomtown Cafe. Oh, so, that would be fantastic. Yeah, I've been there, too. Very cool. So cool. Yeah. Well, 100 cups is a lot of cups it of is. coffee, certainly in one sitting. I would not be able to stay on the stool, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah, 100 <laughs> cups technically would be enough to poison you. Oh, my word. Perfect. Matt, I have never heard anything so fascinating. Certainly something. I raise my coffee mug to history. <laughs> Thank you for oh. writing that for me to say. To you. Finally, <laughs> reading what's on the prompt. Thanks, that Matt. That mug is awesome. <laughs> hey, don't forget, you can enjoy more stories from the ball each Sunday morning at 9 over on WCIX. Good visiting with you. Good to see you. See ya. Bye. <laughs>